So again, we're back with the Tom Ficklin Show, and it's really a pleasure with Ricky and crew and the folks from CTV to be really behind the scenes. And actually, you know, Ricky, we're going to have to have you on the, on the set next the next show, so get, so get ready. Uh, we're going to talk, this is real, the show today is really about Mumia Abu-Jamal, M-U-M-I-A-A-B-U-Jamal, J-A-M-A-L. Mumia adopted that name, chose that name, defined, defined himself, himself in, the late, in his late teens, uh, out of Philadelphia, Mumia is now has been incarcerated for several decades. Was uh, uh, con convicted and sentenced to to um, I won't say assassination. C uh, convicted and sentenced to death, and so that death sentence was um, after a lot of community protest, local protest, national protest, and international protest was uh, let's say amended to life and life imprisonment. So he is in prison, but this, this show is about prisonradio.org, prisonradio.org. We're going to play some clips from Mumia, and actually the first clip will be from a, another gentleman that's uh, incarcerated. And we hear so much about this returning citizen thing, and we all are citizens, not just really returning, but we all are citizens one way or the other. Some of our citizens, clearly, uh, the, the, your rights to necessarily vote, but also to seek employment, to even be just considered a full a uh, human being, once you're released, is not always uh, occurring, but we're going to change that as well. But th this show is about Mumia Abu-Jamal in general, but specifically prisonradio.org. Uh, the fact that Mumia is a journalist, and I say is, he was, he is a journalist, uh, was a Black Panther, uh, sentenced to uh, life imprisonment, but still is expressing not only his beliefs and his foresight, <clears throat> but his intelligence and his integrity and his sharing of what is newsworthy and what is of news value. Ricky, let's go to this first clip. It's kind of a poem from one of the, uh, his, the fellow, fellow inmates uh, in, the, in the federal prison system. And again, the show is really about, uh, I'm urging you and teasing you to go to prisonradio.org. Check out the commentaries on Mumia. Check out what's, what's occurring even still in, in 2017 in terms of enabling Mumia to, uh, for, for justice to be in place when it comes to Mumia Abu-Jamal. Abu, Abu Ricky, let's go to the first, the first clip. With no death sentence, for several years now, well over a decade, the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections kept dozens of men on death row even though they didn't have a pending death sentence. These men held at the state's death rows in Greene County and Greaterford were people who had their death sentences overturned by a state or federal court and held in solitary confinement for months and years until two men filed suits against this long-standing DOC practice. Craig Williams of Green and Sean T. Walker of Greaterford filed separate civil actions in federal court challenging this procedure, but both men initially lost. Both men began their actions by filing their suits pro se or without a lawyer, and both filed appeals before the third U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals where both men prevailed. The Federal Appeals Court ruled in a February 9, 2007 opinion that the continued detention of men in solitary confinement who had no pending death sentences was violative of a state-created liberty interest under the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Williams spent six years on death row without a death sentence. Walker spent eight years on death row without a death sentence. In Williams versus Secretary, DOC, the Third Circuit found this confinement unconstitutional, but also granted the DOC the defense that, until now, this right wasn't clearly established. The Williams decision, being the first of its kind, put the DOC on notice that such a practice was now per se unconstitutional and a violation of a prisoner's state-created liberty interest. Williams proved a talented jailhouse lawyer when he was on the row. He's been off death row since 2012, and he's still one hell of a jailhouse lawyer, still making new law. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison. Again, Ricky, thanks for sharing that clip. Again, this is the Tom Ficklin Show. Prisonradio.org is, the, is the, the one, the singular message of this show. 
Uh, check it out in terms of Mumia Abu Jamal's commentary. You can also get an update on what's uh, cooking for the, the Free Mumia campaign. We may have heard years ago, Free Huey. Uh, Free Mumia was really in the news for, for maybe 20, 30 years, not as much in the last 10, but I just like to kind of go down, not necessarily memory lane, because this situation of incarceration, of solitary confinement, of capital punishment, et cetera, as some of you may know, there's an exhibit here at the New Haven Library on solitary confinement. So there's a lot of information available. Uh, the challenge these days is truly to dissect and interpret and find the, the type of information that's really uh, healthy, I'll use that term, healthy for you, rather than uh, poisonous. So that's, that's a matter of personal choice. But prisonradio.org, urge you to go there. You may go to Democracy Now!, which I really love. Uh, Amy Goodman's show has spotlighted Mumia, has done shows on, uh, shows on him, and we're going to hear, hear, hear from Mumia's voice. The fact that you have an, an active journalist uh, who's sentenced to a life sentence of incarceration, that's, that's profound, but separate part from his personal circumstances, his commentary about life, about politics, about economics, about law, is something that we don't want to sleep on. So uh, just urging you to go to prisonradio.org, and uh, Ricky, let's go to another clip so we can hear Mumia's voice. This show is not about me, but it's about Mumia Abu-Jamal, prisoner rights, prison victories, prison litigation, prison law, prison respect, and really respect for all, for all humanity. His life. From Flint to Standing Rock to the Pennsylvania prison system, since August 2016 to the present, Mumia Abu-Jamal and other inmates at SCI Mahanoy in Pennsylvania have been plagued with unsafe drinking and bathing water. Inmates have complained about hazardous brown water for several months, and prison officials have done nothing to fix the problem. Enough is enough. We are calling for the general public to call Department of Corrections Secretary John Wetzel at 717-728-4109 and demand inmates are given access to clean water for showering and personal use. For more info, people can go to www.freemomia.com. So again, uh, whether it's water in Flint, whether it's water in the prison system, all these issues are connected. I'm, it's really a pleasure to kind of devote this show to a particular circumstance and a particular person, but you can see the ramifications of whether we're and even we, sometimes we will self-imprison ourselves, but that's being like oh, overly dramatic. The fact is there are people that, whose liberties have been restricted, and they may or may not have committed crimes. And when you think of crimes and think of the, this, this false distinction between white-collar crimes and other crimes, what, what does that mean, a white-collar a white -collar crime? Or if we think of the, uh, the, the latest economic meltdown and the, the, the fiscal improprieties in terms of the banking system and no one being being held accountable. So laws are really, uh, again, it's not necessarily, laws are not equated with justice. It's, laws are equated with who has the power to enforce the law. Uh, at best, you can talk about r reparative justice um, or distributive justice in terms of looking backwards or forwards. But nonetheless, there's a tension about how laws are applied, enforced, and who they affect and whether there's been d different treatment. So again, this show is primarily about, exclusively about singularly about prisonradio.org, Mumia Abu-Jamal, and to kind of urge us to kind of think about uh, what is our place in society and sometimes even how privileged you might be and what that privilege entails. Ricky, let's go to another clip from uh, prisonradio.org, and again, it's Mumia Abu-Jamal. 1940, 2017. Al Jarreau was a musical genius. He was a jazz artist, a soul singer, and a pop sensation who thrilled audiences with his mastery of song. Born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on March the 12th, 1940, he was the son of a vicar and earned a master's degree in psychology from the University of Iowa. But what the world lost in psychology, it more than gained in the world of music. In his career, he earned seven Grammys and had five top 10 hits, among them we're in this love together, which hit the billboard charts and rose to number six in July, 1981. We're in this love together, kind of love that lasts forever. It remained a hit for 19 weeks. 
He sang the theme song for the TV show Moonlighting, starring Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepard. And his 1988 effort shot to number two on the charts called So Good. Giroux had a sweet tenor, and his love of singing and music was infectious. Al Giroux now sings with the ancestors. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan. I love that clip because, again, the reference to we're in this love together, it's, it's the universal love. We can kind of just express it and share it with all of us together constantly, 24-7, 365. That's, that's the key. I mean, we hear so much about Republican parties, Democratic parties. I'm going to offer up there really should be just one party, the, the Peace and Love Party, and I think that, that that kind of party, the Peace and Love Party, provides a platform for all of us to kind of jump on board and, and, and get involved. So the Peace and Love Party, I'm going to suggest to be the one party. And, when, and so we just need a one-party system, P Peace and Love Party. Again, the purpose of this show, if you're just tuning in, uh, it's, it's spotlighting prisonradio.org. Um, Mumia Abu-Jamal is a producer. You may or may not know who Mumia Abu-Jamal is. You may not know the name. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is uh, uh, life is about exploration and new information and even old information that you can view in a new light. So this is a gentleman that was convicted of, of murdering someone. Uh, a lot of folks think, think that that was not the case. Uh, there's been protests and, and demonstrations and activity and petitions and et cetera nationally in Philadelphia, throughout the state of Pennsylvania, throughout the nation, and internationally. If you go to prisonradio.org, you'll see on the website events that are taking place worldwide. There's, there's a protest taking place in, in Germany. There was a protest a few weeks ago at the, 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 the American Embassy in France. So I lift this up to just indicate that this show is about uh, really liberation in the, in, the big, in the big term, but also personal liberation and then how even a person who is confined can express his or her uh, uh, creative expression and also giving back information and, and sharing. Ricky, let's go to another clip. And uh, again, the show is not about me. It's about prisonradio.org, Mumia, Mumia Abu Jamal. From the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, now comes the rise of law for black lives. A collective of lawyers, law students, jailhouse lawyers, and other legal workers in support of the latest iteration of the black freedom movement. It couldn't come at a better time. For times of social movements need all the legal assistance it can muster. For those who oppose that system of white supremacy and rampant necrophobia are often targeted by that same system for special punishment. Perhaps the most renowned black lawyer in U.S. history, Charles Hamilton Houston, who trained Thurgood Marshall in the law, taught his students a lawyer's either a social engineer or he's a parasite on society. Today, of course, he'd say she. Marshall, Houston's star pupil, who later went on to become the nation's first black Supreme Court justice, would recount one of his law professor's most potent lessons. There's no law on our side? Let's make some. I carry these words to L4BL. Let's make some. But I hasten to add this lesson from a jailhouse lawyer. The law is a tool of the state, often used for repression. Where are the lawyers challenging unjust and unconstitutional laws like Clinton's anti-terrorist and effective death penalty act, known as EDPA, AEDPA? or the Prison Litigation Reform Act. These so-called laws were designed to enshrine injustice in statute. The gay rights movement forced the fall of DOMA, the patently unconstitutional Defense of Marriage Act. It's time for the black freedom movement to force the fall of AEDPA and PLRA, acts based on lies and injustice which have contributed to mass incarceration. I've quoted a preeminent law professor. Now, let me quote an outlaw, revolutionary naturalist John Africa of the MOVE organization, a man bombed by the government on May 13, 1985 in Philadelphia. This is what John Africa taught MOVE members. Just because it's legal 
don't make it right. Remember, the Holocaust was legal. Slavery, one of the greatest crimes against humanity, was legal. The mass internment of Japanese Americans, according to the U.S. Supreme Court's Kuramatsu decision, was legal. All of this was legal. But was it right? To L4BL, let's fight for what's right. For freedom, not mass incarceration. For justice, not repression. Because black lives matter, all black lives matter. On the move, long live John Africa, all power to the people. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries. Ricky, thanks really for, for show, showing that clip in particular. We hear this term, all power to the people. Some may know its origin. Uh, really, you can certainly equate it with the Black Panther movement. But what was the Declaration of Independence about? And so whether that Declaration of Independence was all power to some people or exclusive people or specific people, this phrase we've continued to hear in its various permutations in American society, and there's no question today as we hear the pandemic coming out of uh, D.C. that all power to the people is something that is not just a word, but yeah, we want to make uh, America great perhaps for the first time. So there's always a historical moment, and, there's every, and life is, can, can be perceived as a historical moment, and you can be perceived as an agent, an actor, and not just a pretender, but, but really a, a potent force in this, uh, the, this continual drama and dialogue and, and history recording of what does it mean to be a society and, and to be a nation. Um, Mumia mentioned the MOVE move, movement, the M-O-V-E. I would Google the MOVE movement. There's something occurred in Philadelphia. Uh, there was a bombing of a, of a, where people lived, not a bombing in Saigon, not a, a bombing in Syria, but a bombing in an inner city. And the MOVE, M-O-V-E, folks live there. Check it out. There's going to be, uh, the incident happened. People were killed. Uh, but there's going to be a MOVE conference in, in Philadelphia in this, the springtime. If you go to prisonradio.org, you'll find more information. And so the show is clearly, in, in my mind, just hopefully to be an inspiration and kind of a, a targeted opportunity for you to focus on Mumia, prisons, liberation. Uh, how does something still last or how does something still remain in people's consciousness for 20, 30, 40 years, particularly when there's an injustice uh, occurring? Mumia may never get out of prison, but think about the prisons that you might be, be, be self-defining yourself to be in and others that you know. In terms of prisoners, people that are getting, are, are returning citizens, people that are getting, quote unquote, released. What are they getting released to and what is your responsibility in that regard? Ricky, let's go to another clip, uh, again, from prisonradio.org, and it's, it's produced by Mumia Abu Jamal. Mean men. The regime of Donald Trump has radiated a global aura of dread, fear, and the bare teeth of the state as a predator hungry for power. From day one, the Trump regime has used fear, innuendo, and lies to sell its program of repression, so much so that one of the most conservative institutions of government, the courts, have been forced to slap down Trump's maniac Muslim ban. Former U.S. Chief Justice William Rehnquist once opined that in times of war, the courts are silent. This axiom provided that the president had his strongest hand in cases involving national security. Because Trump was so ham-handed, he signed an executive order that essentially dared the courts to defy him, barring Muslims, especially Syrian Muslims, from entry into the U.S., even those who had visas approving entry. His defeat at the hands of the Court of Appeals was epic in scope. But even an illegal, unconstitutional executive order affects real lives, separating and shattering families, tearing parents from their American-born children, sowing the seeds of grief and pain that will last for generations. Donald Trump rode the wave of fear and xenophobia and lies into the Oval Office and is stoking the embers of racial hatred for power. He represents the dying generation of people who see their way of life passing away. They are biting, bitching, and clawing to hold back the clock of change. They will not go quietly into the night. 
they will spill their guts of fear and terror against change and fight like hell as they try to make America white again. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. So whether you believe or agree or, or uh, dispute what Mumia just mentioned in terms of the pandemic, uh, the, the, the plague, I like to phrase it, uh, emanating out of uh, Washington and how we need to find some daily inoculation, quite frank, frankly, and don't get contaminated by, by the poison that's emanated, uh, similar to Flint where you have uh, uh, poison kind of things kind of enter the, your, your, your circulatory system. Uh, we have to really kind of find Madame Curie, find again uh, Jonas Salk in terms of how does one inoculate themselves from, from the, uh, the, the contagion that, that, that's emanating out of our, uh, the, the people's house. I, I want to phrase it as the people's house. So this, this show, I, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I really am, am urging you to kind of take, take the deep dive, the deep reflective dive. Check out prisonradio.org. Uh, there's a documentary, Long Distance Revolutionary, made about Mumia, Long Distance Revolutionary. It's very inexpensive to purchase on DVD, and I'm pretty sure it's on some of the, the uh, Netflixes of the world. Speaking of Netflix, as you may have heard that the OJ, in terms of the best quote-unquote documentary, uh, re received the, uh, uh, the, the Emmy was for OJ, but something called 13th. 13th was also nominated as one of the best documentaries of, of, of this, of 2016, and it's on Netflix. Uh, check it out. Uh, Mumia referenced the, the, the carceral state, the, the uh, mass incarceration state, the, the, uh, uh, the, the extent of the, the apprehension of folks, particularly black and brown, more so than, than those people that are considered themselves to be white. But 13th is a documentary, and I think you'll find that interesting. It's, it's on Netflix. It was nominated uh, for, for an Emmy Award, and that's worth, worth seeing as well. There's so much that's occurring, I think, in society, whether you are Rip Van Winkle, whether you've woken up or whether you're awoke. And this, I just uh, really appreciate CTV giving me the, uh, the opportunity to kind of be, uh, to, to be up in the mix and to share. Ricky, I think that's it. We're going to sign off. And uh, it's been, been a pleasure, a, a pleasure once again to kind of be, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be with you, to be with you and for you to be with me.